Welcome to another episode of Journey to the Rise. I'm your host, Lucretia. In today's episode, we welcome Nadine Jimenez. She is a matchmaker. I don't know if you've noticed the matchmaking shows that have been coming on to Netflix lately. It made me begin to wonder if this was a thing. And as I began to research it, I came across Nadine. Sometimes we find love in our relationships in unconventional ways. I don't know about you, but I never want to meet my man in a bar. I mean, I just don't think it's that attractive to share the story of, how did you two meet? And my response is, oh, he was slurring his words and had to use a bar stool so he wouldn't fall over. But hey, he was so cute, so why not? Online dating, while it has and continues to work for many, is saturated with catfish and trolls. And honestly... For some of us, we want to cut to the chase, be authentic in our conversations, and say, yes, I want to be in a relationship without the person sitting across the table to get flush, nervous, quickly ask for the check, and order you an Uber so you can head home alone. I think how Nadine is helping people find what they want to have in their life is absolutely beautiful, and I look forward to her sharing her story. So without further ado, please welcome my guest, Nadine. Jimenez. I have noticed lately on Netflix that there have been these matchmaking shows and some series, and then I come across this incredibly lovely woman on Instagram, and I just had to reach out to get her story. She is vibrant and has a passion for curating relationships and helping people find that romantic relationship they desire to have in their lives. Nadine, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me, and yeah. thank you for that lovely introduction. <laughs> I appreciate you being here. Now, I don't want to botch your name, so would you be so kind to say your full name for me? Yes, Nadine Jimenez Langaña. Ah, gracias. So where did you grow up? Where's home for you? I was born in Mexico, in Mexico City. Uh, my heritage is French Colombian, so I have a mix of cultures in me. Cool. And um, yeah, I, I was I was born in Mexico City. I have two parents that are uh, leaders and fighters, and that always taught me, uh, you know, neurolinguistics and family and relationships. They were very social, party people too. So, really. So that's uh, that's a little bit about how I grew up. That's <laughs> fantastic. So where in Mexico? What was the city? Mexico City. Mexico City. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, what is what was it like for you growing up in Mexico City? Like, what's what was the environment for you there? So, um, when I don't want to say my age, but uh, it was pretty. It it was a small city. Well, small big city, I guess. Mm-hmm. When I was born there, um, a lot of things to do. We always have visitors. We always do did a lot of. Um, uh, you know, just going to the pyramids, going to museums, going to theaters. It was always full of activity, always full of friends, and um, also discipline. A lot. My parents uh, were very strict in terms of uh, school and discipline, and like I said, like mindset and family and relationships. So. Um, it was it was a lot of fun, a lot of activity. I'm the oldest of three, so I was the big sister, the one that had to do uh, how to be the example. Uh, so I paved the way for 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 my brother and sister. Um, I always had a lot of interest in international um, culture, and just because uh, my parents gave us the opportunity to go live in other places too. Wow. So and we always we have family. In Colombia, we have family in Australia, we have family, you know, everywhere. So they will come and I will get to speak a little English here and there, and you know. So uh, just a lot of, a lot of um, activity, a lot of learning, and yeah, that's, that's all. How fun. What a vibrant way to grow up, especially having connections in other countries. That's incredible. Yeah, I think that actually just uh, made me be like super open to uh, different things and just so uh, 
uh, curious about how other people live, how other, you know, what other yeah. people uh, do, and and yeah, just wanted to get to know everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. So once you finished high school, where did life take you? So when I finished high school, I came to live uh, in Michigan actually uh, for a year before I before I before I go to college and I wanted I, I just love like I said so much the the other cultures and just experiencing and I wanted to learn English but I wanted to just really be immersed so my I, uh, my uh, dad had a cousin and his wife that took me in their house and I went to take some community college classes yeah. and just learn the language and it was uh, it was, it was, I think, life-changing for me in a way because I, it really gave, gave me uh, an extra skill to bring to college and to my career. So, so yeah, that's what I did. And then I went to college to study um, international trade. So oh, I, wow. was, I was so interested on international stuff. And it was either tourism or... Uh, or international trade, and back then we were doing the 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 NAFTA, so it was the great a great time to be in international business. So yeah, that's fantastic. And so, what when did you realize you were good at making connections and matchmaking? Like when, like with your your studies and your travels, when did you start putting that together? Um, I think it was a combination of uh, just tra just having to meet new people in new places that made me very sociable and a connector. You know, just just I had to I have to make friends for myself, and sometimes I see that other people need to make friends too. So let's let's help them. I was in associations, uh, you know, when I was when I was in college, I, I joined when I was in Michigan, I joined the, the International Association to just to meet other people and to connect and help uh, people make friends. Uh, in the beginning, I also I was also in love with love. I am a romantic. And I don't know, ever since <laughs> I had my first boyfriend, I, I was just like, this is the best feeling ever to be in love. So I also started to, you know, I would, I would be the friend that asked you, who do you like, you know, and who are you attracted to and who, who do you want to meet? And I will be the one that it's, it's, uh, you know, not shy to go talk to somebody and just say, Hey, let me introduce you to my friend. Um, I actually got together what, two of my friends from college. I knew they liked each other, but he liked her a little bit more. And I will make this like uh, team projects and uh, watch parties and things like that, just for them to just like realize that they were in love. Until uh, I, I went so much to just to be the third wheel, just to just for them to just like, Aww. just like really connect. And I was like, yeah. okay, I think you guys want to kiss at some point you know yeah <laughs> and they've been married for 20 years so they're oh, my that's awesome <laughs> yeah so they're my they're i think they i knew it all along that i wanted you know people to experience love and i wanted to connect them and so yeah that's the that's that's the, the start of it but yeah. i chose another career and i loved my career as well I love supply chain and I love solving problems too and it gave me the opportunity to travel to many places, to live in many places, which also reinforced the opportunity to connect with more people. Everywhere I go, everywhere I went, um, I started in Mexico City working for my company. Then I moved to the U.S., to North Carolina. Then I moved to uh, California also. Then I moved to Barcelona, Spain, back to Raleigh, wow. and ultimately to Nashville. <laughs> so all of that, it was just boiling, you know, it was just boiling in my, inside me. Right. And so how, how did matchmaking, like you're going through your world, literally world travels, which is so exciting, but how did matchmaking start to become more prevalent in your life that made you think, I could do this for a living? Yeah. Well, I found myself single as well um, in, in, in many of my, my stages in life. 
And, you know, I use what people use. In the beginning, I used the apps, and that worked. And um, then I just met people in groups and things like that. So I, I started to see the, the need for me to, to also have a relationship. When I finally moved to Nashville, I had in my mind that this was the time to settle down. After all my travel and all this, I was single, I wanted to settle down here, and I wanted to just put an emphasis more in my life than it at work, because I was working like crazy hours, and um, I didn't have time to date in, in the apps or anything like that. So I started researching and I found a matchmaking service. And I was a client first, so I used it. It worked for me. And I, I said, I was, it was at a time that I was also looking for my purpose and my next steps. It was like, do you really wanna be a vice president of supply chain or do you want to have a life and have a purpose? So yeah. it all came at the same time and, and I decided to, that I found my purpose. Matchmaker can be a career. Matchmaking uh, makes people happy. That's my purpose. And it will give me an opportunity to be my, my own boss and have right. flexibility to have a life. So that's how I chose it. Wow. So how does one get started as a matchmaker? You said you worked with a service, but like, how do you start to branch out? Clearly you're an extrovert, so, and you like to be social, but what are the steps to get started? Well, actually, I got certified. I, I did research. Um, so once I knew that this was a career, I uh, tried to apply for that company. And then I realized that, well, I cannot have two jobs right now. So let me see what I can do. And I found the Matchmaking Institute. And now it's called the Global Love Institute. And you can actually get certified to be a matchmaker. So I was like, I can do that as a hobby. You know, it was the pandemic, it was during the pandemic. So I was like, oh, that's a perfect hobby. I'm gonna become a matchmaker. And ultimately, if I see that that's what I, that, that's what I wanna do, I will start my own company. So I got certified, I did the online program and it took maybe uh, about a year, you know, the way that I was doing it. it because it was, I was working as well at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you get certified, you also get some training on how to do your business case for your business uh, to, to, to start your company. So I did it. That's, that's how you go about it. You just, you just get um, any, I'm, I'm also like a lifelong le learner. I like to learn. So you learn how to do it and then you bring your own uh, experience and your own spice and you do it yeah and so what was it like for you to go into this career full-time because you said you have a full-time job you're doing this as a hobby but then clearly you just felt the pull to just dive in so what was that part of the process like for you I think I think I was um, once I once I got certified um, and once I decided that my next step was not going to be another one in supply chain, I just started saving. I just started saving um, and learning more about how to open my company. Um, I work with a very good friend of mine that supported me through that time and just helped me take the first steps. Um, it was exciting at the same time, you know, just leaving the safety of a job. I knew that that was going to be scary. Mm -hmm. So I prepared myself. I, I prepared myself to, to try this out. And I'm always, I'm always open that to, 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 to see, you know, where this takes me. If this doesn't work well, then I'll find something else to do. But I definitely knew that my career in supply chain was done. I already enjoyed it so much. And so that part was exciting and I knew that this was my purpose and I just, like I said, just saved money and, and, and did it. That's fantastic.
We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Nadine shares what a day in the life of a matchmaker is like for her. A lot out and about and meeting people in person, which is what I like to do. Um, I do at least one event for my singles group a month. And people can go to my website and just find the, find the events. Or I have a meetup group that that's where I post them. I post them on Eventbrite, whatever. But I do at least one event a month. Have you noticed more and more people are dropping from social media? They are tired of being blasted by ads, by the nastiness that can be carried on by endless comments, accounts being blocked or deleted for no reason at all. And the reasons for people leaving and spending less time on these platforms continues. If you're only promoting and marketing your business on social media, this is not the best way to navigate your way to a successful business. But don't worry. I have good news. There is a way to reach your target audience. It's by email. Yes, email. Email marketing is not dead. It is alive and well. Businesses utilizing a smart email marketing strategy can increase sales, make connections, and deliver a message that will be more reliably received than depending upon an algorithm that continues to change. If you want to know more about how to grow your business with an email marketing strategy, go to girlbosscopywriter.com to find out more. Welcome back to Journey to the Rise. We continue our conversation with Nadine. She openly shares a common struggle people face, not just in life, but especially when it comes to relationships and seeking love. So what are your days like? Do you have, does a routine exist for someone who's a matchmaker? (laughs) Yes, there actually is. And it's a little bit more flexible because it depends on who am I working with and what am I doing. If I'm doing coaching, then I'm going to have sessions. Um, I am always looking to connect with more singles. So sometimes I'm, I'm having free consultations. Um, on Wednesdays, my Wednesdays are networking, all networking. I have, I belong to the Nashville business collective and we meet at 8 AM. After that, I go to another networking group, uh, connect Nashville after that, you know, I, I dedicate my Wednesdays to network. So that's one of my routines. The other, the other one is I always like to be uh, helping singles, even if it's with a message. So I try to, I try to put that in my routine just to do, you know, what can help singles? So what am I thinking today that can help my network? Um, so I do that too. And in between I work uh, first with my clients, whatever it has to do with my clients, that's what goes first. Second is uh, just things that I can do to connect with more and things that I can do to help them. So it, that's kind of my, my routine. I always leave some time to work out. So I, I work out at least three times a day. I meditate. I would like to say every day, but the days I can. <laughs> but for, for, for the most part, I do my self-care as well because I know I can give more to people when I am uh, fulfilled as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And because you're also out and about a lot, you have a lot of social events. How do you keep up with the, you know, clearly you did self care, which is very important with your routine and your schedule, but how do you get these started and how do people find you for all the social events that you do conduct? Uh, yes, I do. I, I am I'm, I am a lot out and about and meeting people in person, which is what I like to do. Um, I do at least one event for my singles group a month and people can go to my website and just find the, find the events or I have a meetup group that that's where I post them. I post them on Eventbrite, whatever, but I do at least one event a month. Uh, for singles specifically. Then I am uh, an ambassador an ambassador of internations. So I have a, that's not for just singles, but I also do one event a month for people that just moved here and that are from different cultures or that are interested on, on different cultures. And I do an event for that. Those are the ones that I host. Apart from those, I go to at least four or five more um, just to connect, you know, apart from the networking event, there's also just meetups and just opportunities to, to connect with people. So I also go to those. I try to keep 
my weekends uh, to be with my boyfriend too, you know, <laughs> because sometimes yeah. uh, we, we, we need that quality time. And, um, and the Sundays, I, I sometimes use them for, for socializing. I sometimes use them for rest, for resting, but for the most part, it works. That's awesome. And so what is it like for you when you help two people find one another and they embark on a romantic relationship? It is just the best feeling. It is just, um, I am happy. I am fulfilled. And it's like I'm living it with them. You know, I get that joy of the first, uh, you know, spark and the, the hope of the relationship. So all these emotions, um, I live them as if I was, <laughs> I was in that situation, you know. Um, just, just seeing their faces when, they're, um, when, they, ha when they had a great date or just, just, feeling their gratitude it is just it is just amazing that's i love that for you that has to be just so fulfilling in your heart mm -hmm. and what kind of struggles do you see people facing when it comes to dating well i think the most common struggle is uh self-confidence self-confidence and things that are individual to 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 them so people think that the struggles are the apps and there are not enough single people and things like that. But in general, they have to do with not feeling enough or with not feeling worthy, uh, with not being self-aware um, or just shy, you know. It, but it's all about the self-confidence um, in a way. And and how do you work with someone who is insecure, really wants to have that partner in their life, but they're struggling with their confidence? I help them in any way I can. So with my coaching, um, I help them get rid of those blocks that are in their minds. Normally, it is all about our thoughts. We are thinking automatic uh, thoughts every day, all the time. And if we are not our own friends and those thoughts, uh, we just let them go, um, you know, and be hard on ourselves and just, you know, be negative, they take over. So I help, I help, uh, I help them see what they're thinking and kind of just put a mirror to, to those thoughts and just bring them to, okay, so... Um, are you loving yourself enough? For example, I want to find love. Okay, somebody that comes to see me wants to find love, but they have to find love for themselves first. Right. So I right. guide them through that. You know, what what don't you like about yourself? And I work with I work with many uh, many people to give them extra resources. Like I'm not an expert on weight loss. I'm not an expert on 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 style. I, you know, I can give you a few ideas. I can give you a few tactics, but I want to get you to the right expert if that's what you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. I noticed on your resources on your website, you have a whole list, almost like you have a team. <laughs> it was really <laughs> impressive for my nutrition. Um, fitness, intuitive, intuitive healer, like you just really have made the connections to help your, your clients find their way. Like, what was that like for you to realize like, okay, I need these people and now you have these people. Like that's a great resource that you are providing. Yes. And it's awesome because the, once you become an entrepreneur, you start networking with other people and you start trusting some of these people um, I'm for the most part I've tried all my all my experts or I network with them um, every week so these people that I can recommend are people that I work with every week that I know that I like that I trust so I don't want you to have to do that work apart from everything else you have to do what I can do is I can just um, I can just included in our services you know just be kind of the the contact and just i 
what do we think you need, okay? What do we think you need to love yourself or to give you more self-care or to work with that mindset or to heal because some right. people need to heal. Yeah. Um, and either I subcontracted or I just referred them to, to go straight to those professionals. But those are professionals, like I said, um, they belong to my Nashville Business Collective, which is my main uh, networking group, or they belong to my extended network. Um, and, and, and I can just put them, you know, to their, you know, to their, to their use and, and, and to help them. And I think it speaks volumes of how much you truly care about the people you work with to say, I've worked with everyone who's on that list. Which tells me you're not just saying, oh, well, this is a good idea, this is a good idea. You truly have taken the time to make sure that you're working with quality people to help the clients heal, as you said. Because so many people, I mean, life is tough, relationships are tough, we get into a bad one, it can really set us back with um, the different wounds that we can carry. So I love that you say we need to heal so we can carry forward. And you've done all the work and the research to have trustworthy connections. Yes, to exactly. Really help people. That's beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, and, and and I love it because in a way, that's also my connector uh, mission. You know, it also helps me connect people to the right resources, and it also makes the group and and and, and everybody grow. It makes the per it makes my client grow, and it, it makes my partner grow. So it is just a win-win. And yeah. and I do and I and I do care. I'm not one that is going to tell them. Well, you probably need some style, so hire a stylist to, <laughs> to do this, do that. Right. I really, I really do care about the individual, and and not just like the introductions, like a lot of the matchmakers just do. You know, they focus on the introductions and just giving you matches and send you on your way. Um, even even if you're not ready, even if you don't have uh, the support or the tools, but yeah, I like I like I like that to be my 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 special um, offering, you know, my special um, sauce. Mm -hmm. And you're truly giving them the support, and you're giving them basically a recipe to be set up to win, because so often. You know, we, we do get into that negative self-talk. We think we're not worthy. We think, you know, we have an ex, you know, partner who just really drove in. A, or maybe we had parents who didn't have the best tactic for things. And when it comes to that kind of situation, what steps do you take when you work with someone who's just really good at self-sabotage? So when I'm, when I'm coaching, I explore several areas. I explore the past. So have they healed the past? I explore the present in terms of self-awareness. Are, are they aware that they're sabotaging themselves? Um, I also work on self-confidence, um, self-reliance, uh, and just go through all these questions and steps just to know what's in your mind that is sabotaging you, you know? So if it's something that I think I can help you overcome, then we'll work on that during our coaching sessions. You know, I think, okay, so this is what you're thinking and you're going like, oh yeah, you know what, that's, that's, that's true. And then you decide that you do want to do the, the work and you want to grow as part of this experience, then we're on the same page. Um, sometimes people that are self-touching themselves, they don't want to do the work and that's when either I refer them out or I just say, I want to take clients that I want to, that I can serve. Right. So I'm not going to keep you in sessions if I know that you're not doing or that you, that you're not doing the work or that you need something else. I am going to, um, give you the best resource for, for what you, what, what you need. That's awesome. And, and working with clients, do you notice if like body issues are a concern for, for people? And if so, like how do you over, how do you help them overcome those, you know, different issues that different people carry and probably worry too much about? Um, body issues is, is, is very, 
is very common. They are very common um, in dating. But what I help do is through two areas. One of that is mindset. Like I said, it's your thoughts about your body. But the other part is you are you doing something about it you know if you are doing something about it but you cannot succeed then it's probably the mindset that it's preventing you to succeed um but i have i have the re again it's it's i have the resources i have the okay let's think about what let's say um you want to lose weight and that's your body issue because i see people uh, that are curvy and they like it and if you love it then that's awesome you know because you can date confidently then if it's not an issue but if it's an if it's something that you're bringing to the date and that even if other people don't, don't think you're overweight but you think it then you do need to do something about it either it is true mindset it is to say Hey, you know what? I actually really like this size. I don't want to be. I don't want to. I don't want to be uh, smaller. Or it is to well. I'm, I gotta. I gotta do something with my nutrition, and I gotta. And I, I gotta hit the gym. So, whatever it is, if, either if it's to change your mindset or to or to change the actions that you're taking, I can help you figure it out. That's awesome. And it's fantastic that you're willing to be open about that dialogue. And I love that you said, um, you know, if it's something you're not comfortable with, what are you doing about it? And to go into the mindset, because I think so often um, we, we get hung up on, oh, I don't like this little part of me here. And yet you get with the right partner and they're like, why? I love that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. But it is. It, 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 and it's great to hear it from outside, but you have to hear it from inside. True. That's a very valid point. So, you know, it is great that somebody's gonna, somebody's gonna like you, who you are, and you are worthy no matter what. Okay, so that is, that is a given. That doesn't change if you're overweight, if you're a bad person, it doesn't change. You are gonna be loved by someone. Now, you have to, if you don't love yourself and you're trying to find a partner, then you bring it, you bring it, you show it somehow. It will be, it will make you more shy. Mm -hmm. It will, it will, it will make you, um, you know, like uncomfortable sitting or uncomfortable, uh, like you're covering your body somehow because you don't want them to see this, you don't want them to see this. So this is not attractive. The lack of confidence is not attractive. It's not the weight, it's not the height, it's not anything in your package, it's your attitude towards it. I absolutely agree, because I, I notice like within myself, all the <coughs> myself out there, instead of throwing someone under the bus, when I have been more insecure, I get very in my head, and you know, I just tell myself, it just snowballs, and it gets worse and worse and worse. And I was talking with a friend of mine, like just a few days ago, and he's a, a gentleman I've known pretty much my entire life and happened to run into him on the road. And when he pulled away, I'm like, what is it about him that's just so attractive? And I'm like, it's his confidence. Mm -hmm. He's a very confident man. And that was revolutionary for me because I'm like, that's where I need to start. Exactly. So I love that you, you open up that door and you're willing to have that conversation and just say, look, work on that confidence and everything will fall into place. Yes, yes. And, and you know what? It is a difficult conversation. Um, I feel like I can have it because I've been through that. I've been through um, thinking that I was not attractive enough. And I've dated thinking that I'm not attracted enough. And lucky for me, I took action and I had a coach that showed me how to love who I was um, and do and take the actions that I needed in, to, for, for myself and to be my best friend and to, to manage my thoughts when they're, you know. So I feel like I have the authority to talk about this because it's something personal to me too. I dated being um, insecure and I've dated being confident and it's a world difference. So wow. I can, 
you know, I can actually be an example. I can actually tell you, I know how this feels. I know yeah. how it feels to feel ugly. I know. And, and that's it crazy. can change. It's <laughs> crazy to me that you would think that you're ugly because you're beautiful. Like, oh, thank you. But I used to think that. I used to, yeah. I, I used to have um, acne when I was younger, and this always followed me around, you know? Yeah. It, it always followed me around saying, you know, people are going to see it. People are going to see your scars. People are going to see, you know, weight the same. Even if I wasn't, if, if, even if I've never been like truly overweight, but I, for me, there's, there's times in my, there are times in my life where I've been overweight and I see my chicks and I see, and, 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 and I could just go to that place. But I know now that is a trigger and my thoughts are going there and maybe I am numbing some feelings with food or with other things mm-hmm. and what I can do be doing some transformation and just losing weight and and go and hitting the gym and that is a way a better way and a more positive way to treat my insecurity than just eating more you know <laughs> right right and I love that you said manage your thoughts I think that is so applicable to people because we do get in that downward spiral of I'm not good enough oh that person you know 15 years ago said I was ugly that person 15 years ago you don't you don't even see them anymore like why are they living rent free in your head <laughs> yeah yeah and it, do, it doesn't matter people I can see 30 people and right now tell me I'm ugly and I'm gonna say that's not true because exactly. I believe it yeah. But if you don't believe it, then you hear social media and you look at the other bodies and you look yeah. at the other uh, faces and styles and you compare to them because you're not feeling that you are enough. So you are looking for reasons to tell you that is true. If you say I'm beautiful, then you're looking for reasons to tell you that is true as well. Right. So you'll find it, no, whatever, whatever, you're, whatever you're thinking, you'll find it. So mm-hmm. if you manage it, then it's better. Yeah, absolutely. And you work with so many different people. And when you host your events, how do you work with the various age groups that show up and want to work with you? It depends on the event. Sometimes I do... Uh, all ages mixers and then I just let them flow um, not naturally uh, you know sometimes you're gonna be lucky and there's a lot of people in your age range sometimes you're not and what I try to always encourage people is not to miss it because of age because you never know if you're gonna meet an older woman that is gonna have a son or a, or a daughter or a friend, nephew, whatever. So if you see it as I am going to have fun and meet people, it's very different than if you see it as I am. I have to have people in my age range because otherwise it's not going to be a successful event. That's not how I see it for my events and I hope that my attendees know that about me now. Mm-hmm. And know that sometimes they're going to be younger, sometimes it's going to be older, and that's okay because at the end of the day, I am going to meet you and I'm going to try to match you anyway. Um, and, and you have more possibilities of me matching you if I meet you in person. That's one, one of the events. The other events that I do is speed dating. On those, I try to divide by times, like at 6 o'clock, the 20s and 30s, 7 o'clock, the, the 40s and 50s, and then the, the 60 plus. Or, you know, just try to make it so that because you are doing speed dating and it's going to be one on one time. I do want uh, the conversation to flow uh, smoothly. Yeah, absolutely. Do you notice there's a particular age group that you're working with or is it very mixed across the board for you? I work with everything a little bit of everything um i've noticed that the younger men generation the the younger male generation is attracted to my coaching um attracting a little bit to my coaching and to helping them um just nobody teaches you how to date so i feel like they look at me as 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 a teacher and as as a guide 
and help them, helping them build that confidence. So I have that younger men generation. I also have women that I mentor, but it's less. Um, but it, it happens like sometimes I match the people I'm mentoring with the people I'm coaching, you know. Um, and then I have the older women that are also identifying, you know, with my story and with me and they and 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 they want a little bit also of coaching and 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 matchmaking so i have those two my 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 target market has been men because i think that methodology works uh but i work with everyone i really want to I, I really just want to help people connect that's beautiful are there kind of do you face challenges working with someone who's been divorced the main challenge with people that are having divorced, well, there's two main challenges. One is if they haven't let go, so if they haven't forgiven that situation that guide them through divorce, then, um, then that's something that we need to work on before they even go dating. But it can be worked on. That's the good news. Um, the the other issue the other issue could be when when it's not yet final and they're still going through through the through the struggles i try to tell them you know take some time make it final before you even before you even come to come to a matchmaking service you know i think you you do have to have that time to make it final and if it's amicable then you can go right right ahead and, and date you know if it's something that you just decided that that was in a good relationship um but it's all about how people manage their own divorce uh situation um right. some people are are holding grudges and that is going to get in the way right absolutely and what kind of challenges do you face working with someone maybe who's been single for an extended period of time uh, I think the challenge there is openness because the more that you spend by yourself, the more you only like this and you only like that and it will there will not be any way that I will give up my independence for, for anything less than this. <laughs> so, right. And, 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 for, and for those, I tell them... Um, really reflect and your list and see if those are really things that are important to have a relationship first of all do you really want to be in a relationship right decide that mm -hmm. is part of the self-awareness on the coaching do yeah. you really want to be in a relationship and then let's focus on a top three non-negotiables you know, those are really the things that are important because when you put a, a, a big list, nobody's going to measure up. And I've seen Never profiles. Right. I sometimes help people with their profiles because I've seen profiles where they're listing everything that they need and what they want. And guess what? Your future partner is disqualifying themselves. They're, they're dis they are disqualifying themselves when they see that list. Right. Because they they're thinking, oh, that's not me. So bye. You were you were cute, but bye. <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. Uh, so so that's 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 a, that's the thing with people that have been single for a long time. Just the openness. You have to be open to receive. Otherwise, uh, you're gonna stay alone. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Because if you do have this huge list mm -hmm. and you want everything to be checked off. As you said, you're you're disqualifying someone who could treat you like, you know, the the ideal situation that you really want to have in a romantic partner. But maybe they don't know how to cook Thai food, and that's important to you. It's like, well, what if they picked up Thai food and brought it home? You know, like there's a compromise. And I yeah. love that you say, hey, we have to work on this because your list is intimidating and you're scaring people off. <laughs> exactly. And then when I introduce them as the great people they are, then that has a completely different effect on the potential matches. Mm -hmm. um, but it is very often that you hear like, oh, if they're not six, six feet or if they're not uh, blonde or if they're not this or they're not that. Well, how many times have you heard, oh, I... I had 
uh, people that have been married for years to say, oh, the, the reason to our success in our relationship was that he's six feet. Exactly. Never. Never. <laughs> right. Or mm -hmm. that he, oh, she's a blonde. That's why we're so happy for so many years. No. <laughs> no. So be open and experience that person there and how she makes you feel, how he makes you yeah. feel. Yeah. And do, do your values align? Does your head, your heart, your chemistry, do, does it align? That's what you're looking for. Right. My, I've been in, I've been a bridesmaid in many weddings. I've been in 15 weddings and I could tell like going in, okay, this is probably going to end in divorce. This won't last very long, but there's, there's one marriage in particular that I knew would be long lasting. Like she showed up the day of the wedding, it was raining and she's like, oh, I don't care. Marry my best friend. Mm -hmm. And they're best friends to this day. And you will see them on social media, not like flaunting what they're doing, but just in I don't think they're doing it intentionally, but it's just so organic. They're truly enjoying each other's company. Yes, exactly, exactly. And that's when you know it's the real thing. Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah. Because you're enjoying the company and that has nothing to do with the package. And he treats her better than I think anyone else she could have ever picked to have in her life. And it's a very mutual respect relationship. Yeah. But she probably also treats him with so much respect Absolutely. and love. And, yeah. and, and, and that's, you know, something that I always bring to, to the people too, is like, take your own responsibility. You got a great relationship, mm -hmm. make it the best you can and love this person as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now I was scrolling on your Instagram. I love your Instagram. And oh. we're definitely going to make sure that's posted. You're very active on Instagram. And I came across this, it was almost like a testimonial, and I'm going to borrow it along with your comments, and I would love for you to expand. But it stated, I don't think you'll find a more thoughtful and caring matchmaker. This is clearly what she loves to do, and she genuinely wants to help people out of the compassion in her heart. She's helped me to discover the obstacles that have plagued me for over 25 years and was able to get me a match with someone at one of the events. I am confident for the first time ever that this will work. I cannot thank her enough and will be recommending her to everyone for as long as I live. And what I love is your response was that the best gift a matchmaker can receive. Many companies make introductions, but they don't you know, genuinely care. Um, I'm paraphrasing there. Yeah, yeah. But, and you state that the secret to building successful relationships and we immensely are proud of our clients and taking the initiative and investing in themselves, add a little touch of matchmaking magic, and we yes. achieve success. Yes, yes. Uh, I love that. It's, uh, it, it's, it's a Google review from a guy that was in my dating boot camp. Uh, we first had a, an informal network conversation, and he started to tell, tell me about, a little bit about him, and I started to see these things in his head, the thoughts, right? He mm -hmm. has the thoughts, he has the, the, the things that, things that are, are changeable and he's willing to do it. He is looking for me because he wants to change, he wants to transform. And so we had the dating bootcamp, it was a six uh, week program. And at the end of the program, I did a celebration party, which was the speed dating event that I did uh, last month. So um, he showed up. That's what I told him when he told me, thank you so much. Like we <laughs> hit it off and he was like so oh. happy. I was feeling the butterflies myself, yeah. but I told him, thank you. You showed up for you. Right. You showed up for you. And that's how this happened. That's how this magic happened. He showed up for him. My matchmaking magic was at the end of the event, there was a, a lady that came late and I told him, hey, why don't you talk to, why don't you talk to her for a few minutes? Um, uh, and he's like, well, I gotta go. I said like, talk to her for a few minutes, like humor me. Yeah. And, and they hit it off. And oh. they're, they're right now, he just updated his Google review to say, update, uh, I have a girlfriend. He just <gasps> told me, yeah, he oh. just told me, he just told me yesterday, I saw him in person. Uh, but 
it is is this the part that I, I'm telling you that is so rewarding because yeah. he showed up for him and he invested on him. I think investing on matchmaking is a signal to the world and to the universe that you care about you. Right. And that you care about having a relationship, a good relationship with yourself and yep. with a partner. You are telling yourself, this is one of the actions that you say, oh, do I stay and complain? Do I stay and complain that dating apps don't work and that we hate them and blah, blah, blah. And do I stay into this mindset or do I say, all this money that I'm spending on apps and 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 being single you know and right. and all all these other things that go through it i am going to invest on matchmaking service i am going to invest on myself i'm going to work my mindset and i am going to find a partner that yeah. is a total it, this is a successful path the complaining and the passive path is not going to take you anywhere right and you're right, being single and trying to go out and spending money on drinks and spending money on this and spending money on events and they, they have these group outings, which I've done those and it seems like people show up to those group outings already paired up. It's like you're spending all this money. Why not take your investment into a matchmaker who really has the genuine effort and has done the research and lined up the resources and truly cares to get to know you as a person to say, hey, let's find you the person that you're looking for. Exactly. And and, 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 and let's go to the expert, you know. Right. And yeah. the odds are that you already tried everything for years. Right. And you know how much it costs and you know how, and, and the worst cost of it is time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's not only money, it's, it's time too. Right. So now you already try that, try something different. Mm -hmm. And I really make it so, I mean, my comprehensive packages are, 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 are um, a good investment. But I make it where I have options for everybody. So there's no excuse. Right, right. So if there is someone out there who wants to have that special person in their life and they haven't found them yet and, and yet they've tried going out with their, their friends, they've tried the online apps, which by the way, are miserable. <laughs> you know, they... <laughs> I, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah, it's just awful. Like you filled the profile, but you did it wrong. You had the wrong photo. Why are there so many men with pictures of fish? I don't understand. Like <laughs> I I get it. I've been there. I use them and I have the the bad stories because I got you know, ghosted, catfished, everything. Yes. Not, not, not really catfish. I, I knew enough to not do that, but um, there weren't any a, a lot of bots by the time. But now there are a lot of bots as well. Right. Uh, but I also have the good story. When I became a matchmaker, I actually used the apps as my database, and I found my partner there. So I cannot talk bad about the apps, <laughs> but they are. There are a lot of struggles um, yeah. now when when using them. Yeah, and, and I know they have, the apps have worked for people, but we, you know, there's definitely the AI part where now it's like, ugh, is this even a real human? But having you available, and you mentioned we, we chatted before we, um, before we, we recorded that you don't have to be in Nashville to use your network. You can be anywhere and you can help people really connect. Yeah, exactly. So um, I offer a free consultation to anyone, um, anywhere and dating coaching as well. And I have a network of matchmakers, more than 900 matchmakers all around the world. Wow. So even, you know, I feel better about taking matchmaking clients that were, that are in Nashville, but I have the network and that I can refer you to another matchmaker of my trust as well. So that's, that's a, uh, that's how I can help you from whatever you are. That's amazing. Now, how can people find you and connect with you? Like, let's get the website, the socials. We want people to find you. Fill us in. All right. So, matchmaking uh, matchmakingnashville.com. That's the website. I have everything, uh, everything there. 
Instagram uh, matchmake, uh, at Matchmaking Nashville, uh, Facebook at Matchmaking Nashville as well, and um, just go to my website and build a consultation. I think that's the best way to get with me. Just send me uh, send me uh, a note on Instagram or Facebook, whatever. Get on my calendar. Go to my cal my calendar link and get that 30 minutes worth of uh, value and let me get to know you because you never know. I can match you. That's amazing. And I will get all of that posted in the show notes. I know you're super busy. I think you have another uh, call coming up and I don't want to keep you. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your story and such fantastic insight. And I love that you're passionate about love and helping people find that in their lives. Thank you, Lucretia. I'm really, I was really honored to be in your uh, podcast. You're amazing. Uh, you're amazing to work with and to talk. I, I could talk for hours uh, with you. I hope we stay connected and yes. more people in my network reach out to Lucretia as well uh, because she's amazing and this podcast are really good. You're the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. That's it with Nadine. As she mentioned, she may be based in Nashville, Tennessee, but she can help you no matter where you live. If you want what we all want to have that special person in your life, this is someone who's going to help you find that person you can connect with. If you want to contact her, please go to the links in the show notes. Next week, we're going to stay in the relationship realm. And wow, I have been talking with this woman for months, working with her as she was so incredibly busy to get her scheduled. And I am so thankful for her time. We bring to you Brie Mosher. I mean, isn't that the way the universe is? Like there's just a million little moments of getting it and then it clicks and you can look back and go, wow, it makes sense that I do this work and that I am where I am. I just think the biggest thing is like listening to what draws you in, what interests you, what feels like bliss, what feels like fun, because those desires are innate and they're not placed on your heart by accident. You know, if you feel drawn toward feminine masculine energy, follow that. If you feel drawn toward, I don't know, becoming an aerospace engineer, follow that. Right. Go, your desires are innately, I believe, placed on your heart by the universe because they're leading you down your soul path. Yes. So with that knowledge, just kind of kept doing what felt good and then I would gain clarity but I will say the abusive relationship was probably the biggest awakening of that was the biggest aha and it was a thousand little aha thank you so much for listening to journey to the rise please do follow us on your podcast apps you have the latest episode downloaded I would love to have you give us a follow on instagram you can find our account at, at journey to the rise podcast this episode was researched produced and edited by Girl Boss Productions. Music was written and produced by Girl Boss Productions. Please remember to be kind to yourself. When you're kind to you, it is easier to be kind to others. Because as I have mentioned before, my friend Nina Covington often says, you cannot hate yourself into a version you love. I'm Lucretia, and you've been listening to Journey to the Rise.